So first I will assume that you know multivariable calculus and that you might have seen this trick before, because in this case it is a very quick and easy derivation. And then I will uh, slow down and go through the whole thing in more detail. So the question we want to ask is, what is the area under a simple Gaussian e to the minus x squared? And to do that, we just integrate this expression from minus infinity to plus infinity. And the question is, how do we do this integral? Well, the trick is to, instead of trying to do this integral, to square the integral expression and work that out. So we square this integral expression and we write this as a product of two integrals. We rename the variables in the two integrals, otherwise it would be confusing. And then we turn this product of the integrals into a double integral. Now, uh, the trick is to rewrite this double integral in polar coordinates. And once we do that, it turns out that this double integral in polar coordinates separates into the product of two single integrals, like so. And uh, we do those integrals separately, and the angular integral gives us 2 pi, and the radial integral gives us 1 half, and so the answer is pi. And so we go back and say that since the square of what we want to find is pi, then the answer to the integral of the Gaussian is the square root of pi. And this is a well-known result. So now let's run this trick again, except for instead of squaring this integral expression, we raise it to the nth power. And so we proceed exactly as before. We uh, write down this integral n times and rename the variables and turn the product of those n integral expressions into an n-tuple integral. And then we rewrite it in n-dimensional hyperspherical coordinates. And as before, we separate the integral into the radial part and the angular part. And it turns out that the angular part, which you can think of as an integral over a solid angle element of an n-dimensional hypersphere, gives you exactly the surface area of a unit n-sphere. And so we rewrite this as the radial integral times s sub n, which is the surface area of the unit n-sphere, and the radial integral turns out to give you the gamma function. Now we go back to the original expression where we took the integral of the Gaussian and raised it to the nth power, and we know that this integral of the Gaussian gives us the square root of pi, because we computed it at the very beginning, and so we know that the expression then is equal to the square root of pi to the nth power. But now we can solve for the surface area of the unit n-sphere, and it gives us this. Now this expression gives the surface area of a unit n-sphere. To get the surface area of a n-sphere of radius r, we just take this expression and multiply it uh, by r to the n minus 1. And to compute the volume of such a sphere, we just integrate this surface area with respect to r, and we get this. Pi to the power of n over 2 divided by n over 2 times the gamma function of n over 2, which we can simplify using properties of the gamma function. And for a sphere of unit radius, we simply set r equals to 1, and so we get pi to the power of n over 2 divided by the gamma function. So this is very interesting, because the gamma function grows very rapidly, because gamma is kind of like a factorial. And so it turns out that when n is large, in fact, when n is larger than, let's say, about 20, then the volume of the unit n sphere becomes approximately 0. So somewhat counterintuitively, as n becomes large, the volume of the unit n sphere becomes very, very small. And in fact, it is maximum for n equals 5, and then it goes downhill from there. This, by the way, is why it's so hard to cluster points in high dimensions using something like the k-means algorithm. So there you have it. This is the quick version of the derivation. And I also made a version where I go a, a little bit slower, quite a bit slower actually, and fill in all the details uh, about the integration and the hyperspherical coordinates and uh, what is the gamma function and uh, uh, things like that. So if you feel like uh, you want to know more details about what I just did, or if uh, I went a little bit too quick for you, feel free to click on that video and uh, maybe it will make a little more sense.